This is a quick tutorial on how to use the audio analyzing node in Spark AR. Some of you may know that I recently got to create an audio reactive and time reactive flower um, for the AR scavenger hunt at Coachella. And that's why I made this video because creating audio reactive elements is actually a lot easier than a lot of people think. And I think it's a very cool uh, type of interactivity. So I'd like to see more people explore it. But anyway, let's get down to it. So this is the piece. First off, we're gonna need to add a speaker. So we'll go here, a little plus button, type in speaker. Let's go ahead and hit the arrow key to add our speaker down here. Then we're also going to need to add a, an actual audio clip, which I've downloaded here. These need to be mono and they need to be M4A files. So you might need to convert them, um, but just keep that in mind. So I'm just gonna go ahead and drag and drop this little dude in to my patch editor. So let's go ahead and switch this to audio player, if I can type correctly. Okay, audio player, sweet. All right, so, oh, it didn't edit. Okay, let's try again. Audio player. And then we're also gonna need an audio analyzer, right? And this is like the main audio patch, um, which we'll be using to, um, basically what it's doing is it's going to, let's connect audio to audio here to the speaker. So we're taking the, um, the actual audio file here, so the music, we're feeding it into this audio player, we're feeding that audio into this analyzer, and then we're feeding the audio back out again to the speaker so that we can actually hear it um, when we play it. And then these bands down here each represent a different frequency, uh, so you can create different, you know, responses based on the, the audio that it's hearing. So like if you had something that was reactive to bass and drums, you could use some of the lower frequencies, or if you wanted something that responded to a hi-hat. Um, you would choose the higher frequency. We also need a, um, a multi-clip controller for the audio, just so that we can tell it to play. We'll feed this into the controller bit. And then, because I want this to be easy to show you again, I'm just going to add a screen tap, but this could be, you know, any kind of trigger. So let's do a screen tap. Boop. And we're going to hit play there. And now let's go ahead and add a few more things. So all animations are actually built on um, a pretty common little patch uh, technique. So let's add an animation and I'll show it to you now. It's basically, you're telling it that you want to animate something and then you have to tell it um, how to animate it. And this is done with the transition patch. So, okay. So now we've got the animation, we've got the transition, and from there, we're want, gonna wanna control something um, on the flower, right? So I'm gonna actually use these uh, little front stamen type things. Let's go ahead and select them over here in your scene. I've got those front petals, and I'm gonna adjust the scale for this particular tutorial. So I'm gonna hit the arrow next to scale to bring it back into the patch editor. Okay. Now from there, I want to um, uh, go ahead and give it a default size because I don't want them to totally disappear. I happen to know these are um, just at a scale of one normally. So I'm gonna use 0.8 as sort of the starter um, so that they never like fully disappear. And from here, we actually need to trigger the playing of, of the animation and, uh, and then of course do the audio analysis as well. So let's go ahead and set up the, um, the audio part. The audio analyzer patch is going to take a bit of audio, be it what's coming through the mic or you know a clip that you give it, and it's going to break it into different frequency ranges, also known as bands. It divides it into eight. And when it hears um, a particular amount of frequency within that range, or that band, it's going to shoot a, a number um, from 0 to 1 through one of these bands. So if it's a high frequency sound, for example, it's going to shoot more th through um, band number 1. And we're going to take that number that it's giving us and actually convert that into the scale of the front pedals. Now, a scale of an object is a vector 3, meaning it has an x, y, and a z. And we're only going to get a single number. So what we need to do is actually convert that single number um, into a vector 3 and then feed that into the animation transition. So I'm going to click out and drag from band. And we're going to use a pack to do this. So we're going to take one number and basically turn it into 3 by feeding the same exact number into all three of the slots. And then from that pack, then we're going to 
drag that into the end section of this transition patch. So it's basically saying you're going to create an animation that starts at point 8 and then moves to whatever number is being fed to it dynamically through this audio analyzer. Now we need to actually turn on um, turn on the animation, uh, which I'm also going to activate with this like screen tap that I've already made. So we need to send a, a pulse for that. So I'm going to click out and drag and let's select a switch. Okay, from there, we're just going to use this as the turn on. Oops, connect it properly. And then from the switch, I'm going to do a pulse. Okie doke. And now we're going to select here, connect our play in reverse. Excellent. So this should work. Let's give it a test. Now down here, I'm going to switch my um, uh, simulator to touch so that it will emulate the touch. And I'm going to hit the little restart button just to make sure it works. Orbit this guy up just a little more. Easier to see. Okay. And now we can try. So, you can tell that's working. And you may or may not be able to tell, but that's actually me singing too. Um, I am a musician, which is one of the reasons that I'm interested in creating these like audio reactive elements. Now you can see that it was like bouncing kind of like crazy. And that's, that's because we're getting just sort of that raw signal. What we actually want to do is dampen that down just a little bit, smooth it out essentially so that it's not quite so herky-jerky. So the way that you do that is actually through something called an exponential smoother, uh, which I'm a big fan of. So we're going to take it out of here. This is a pretty good technique to use for all sorts of animations. So we're going to feed this into X, Y, and Z. Boop. And now it's going to dampen that signal by 200, which, which actually might be a little bit too high for our purposes, uh, but we can adjust accordingly. So let's go ahead and try it again. Okay, do you see how like smooth that is um it's almost too smooth so i am gonna take this dampening down to like 50. we're gonna reboot and try it again much better So that's, that's really the gist of it. You can control all sorts of things by taking this signal and then connecting it to some sort of attribute. So you could adjust color, you could adjust scale, you could adjust um, rotation or position. Really, the possibilities are endless. You just need to get in there and experiment. And that's it. At a very basic level, it's an audio reactive AR interaction. If this was helpful to you, um, go ahead and hit the like and subscribe and all the bloody blah, blah that we always have to say uh, but it it really is helpful for us so if this was helpful for you give a girl a boop in the meantime happy making and uh, see you soon